Okay, the next game, it says Derp. He's our hero. And he's playing opponent. It says opponent. 1759 opponent. Derp is 1700. This is a 75 minute plus 30 second increment over the board game from early October. My third classical game ever. My time management was horrible. I played too fast in the opening and missed a great chance. Then got into a worse middle game where I spent a lot of time. The end game was complicated and I felt like I should be able to draw it, but I was basically playing on increment from move 40 onward and blundered the draw away twice. Chess is hard. Now we'll look at the game and it won't be anything like that. No, it probably will be. Yay, 2,000 viewers. What else? Okay, so let's have a look. Knight c6 isn't a great move. White's, white's already better. e5 is risky because we got this nice open diagonal, but I guess you got to risk it to get the biscuit. d4 is good. Knight c3 is good. Well, so far, you're playing much better than your opponent, Derp, and you're you have a big advantage. Queen b3 is good. You get the two bishops. He should play queen e7. Took. Takes. Yeah, this is terrible for, for, for black. Castles is correct. Okay, so you made your first mistake here. You have two good moves here. You can play knight g5, threatening f7, which is annoying. Um and the engine actually likes knight g5 more than the move I would play, which is knight takes pawn, because I like winning a pawn. Hooray, I want a pawn. Okay, and the reason I don't like bishop a3, which is what you played, is I'm very worried about knight a5. And maybe I shouldn't be worried about it. Maybe knight a5 loses. Okay, so you play bishop a3. And the engine says knight a5 is forced, otherwise black resigns. And you should see them move knight a5 because every other move is terrible. Thanks, Fen Beingold. Knight a5 is forced. I'm not saying he played knight a5. I'm just saying it's forced. Okay, and he played knight a5. Now it's equal. You move your queen. Good. He took. Good. Yeah, and now it's unfortunate if you play bishop f8, which you should always do, he plays knight b6. That's a very good intermezzo. That threatens the queen, and he'll win the bishop next move. Otherwise, bishop f8 would be quite a good move. Okay, so so you... Wait, you did play bishop f8? I just assumed you took this, and I was telling you... I was telling the audience why bishop f8 was bad. But you played bishop f8. Oh, well, then we'll see why it's bad, because... Yeah, bishop f8's a blunder. So you were much better than you played bishop a3. Now you're equal and you played bishop f8. So don't move your queen bishop anymore. Those are all your mistakes. Don't ever move your queen bishop. Then you play fine. Okay, knight b6, exclam, former muscle. Queen b5, <clears throat> queen takes f8. Queen takes e5, okay, that's legal. Queen d6, no. Oh, not queen d6. Okay, then castles. I would take the queen and isolate the d-pawn if I was white. But Okay, you castled, that's fine. And this ending is probably really close to losing for white. But in a practical game with players of your level... You know, pr probably not. Okay, and I'd like to, thanks for saying something, take on me. Okay, because based on what you said, this is an aha moment. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, it says the players are 1,700. 
However, White also said this is his third tournament game ever. So I'm guessing Black is 1,700 over the board rating and that Derp is 1,700 on the internet. That's and that his over the board rating doesn't exist. The real Sean Deeb subscribed and that is the real Sean Deeb. So CL Smith is impressed and the rest of you don't know who that is. But CL Smith is impressed and that's all that matters. Yours is an estimated club rating. Yeah. Sean Deeb, perhaps the best poker player in the world, if he doesn't say so himself. So here's a good question. Who thinks, okay, take the strength of what they think, not what they are, just what they think. Okay, and this is poker strength. Sean Deeb, Phil Helmuth, or Dominic Nietzsche. Those three players probably all think they're the best player in the world. So that would be that would mean it would be a tie. But I would think Helmuth is like half kidding. But maybe he's not. Chuck Nola subscribed. He's not kidding? Man, the truth hurts. Freddie Deeb is pretty good too. Freddie Deeb has a serious case of old. Sean Deeb doesn't have that. Hey, Sean, are you still losing weight? Or I shouldn't ask. Don't ask, don't tell. No, but Helmuth recently was explaining that other top players think that he's good at mixed games. I thought you'd just tell people that so they'll play you mixed games. That you don't actually think that. You just tell them that. Then, you know. You know, like with Sammy Farha, you tell him he's good at PLO. You're down to 238, you're crushing me. Also, and, and also, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. This sounds like I'm making a joke, but I'm not. A lot of times in my life, I don't know where to stand on an issue. It could be any issue. I don't know. So usually I don't have an opinion one way or the other. However, if I'm required to have an opinion for whatever reason, instead of finding something, somebody I agree with, I find somebody I don't agree with. That's much safer, much better. And I've noticed in the poker world, I've never agreed with Mike Mattisau about anything. So if I want to like understand the situation in the Middle East, I see what Mattisau writes and then I think the opposite. That That's kept me in good stead. Like finding people I don't agree with and then thinking the opposite of them. Then I do pretty well in my life. That's an optimal strategy. Thank you, Real Sean Deeb. Okay. Anyway, thanks for subscribing to the channel. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope poker is going well and so forth. Karen's going to be in Vegas in December at WPT. I'll be at home watching the dogs. You, you know how it is. Okay. So Black played Bishop E6. Excellent. White played f3, never play f3. Knight d5, forking two pawns. That wouldn't have forked two pawns if white didn't play f3. If you see what I'm saying. Okay, e4 is correct. That's correct. d5 is correct. Now, white has connect four. So in certain games, you'd be winning. f6, never play f6. I think f6 is the best move. Knight d3, bishop d7, knight c5, bishop b5 attacking the rook, hoping for rook c1, knight e2 check. 
Got to hope for something. Rook e1. Rook b8. Yeah, black is just up two pieces for a rook. This is just technique. Like if two GMs were playing, black would always win. That's a good move. That's a good move. That's good. I mean, nothing much is happening. Black is just up material. I wouldn't play C5, but I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. I like B5. I like A5. Yeah, black's playing pretty well. White's giving a knight's tour, so that's good. If this was played in the Isle of Man tournament, which is currently going on, which strangely has a women's tournament, Ooh, Isle of Man, um, White would resign. Like if Shanklin was white, he would have resigned a long time ago. And if Shanklin was black, probably draw. Okay, so Rook C1, C4, explosive. Yeah, black has good technique. B2, god damn. Rook A8. All these moves are great that Black's playing. Black's playing better than perfect. Okay, so obviously Black can win very quickly here by, by playing Rook to D1. And then take the Knight and Queen. Like that's, there's nothing to analyze. Rook here, then take the Knight. So rook here, King E2, Rook takes Knight and Queen. Rook C1 also wins immediately. But okay, bishop b5 is winning. Rook c2. Okay, and queening is not the right move. The right move is complicated. The right move is c3. And the idea is to play rook d1 again and take the knight and queen. But okay, that's. Well, I mean, b1 queen wins, so I'm not going to complain. Okay, g5 is a blunder. It's a very strange blunder because it just gives a pawn away. So here black is winning. Um, and the way black wins is to just move his king here. And then eventually white has to move a pawn and black is going to take all the pawns. Um, g5 just blunders a pawn and now white is drawing. Okay, and he took. And in this, he took on e5. And now white got cute. White needs to just take back, and white has three passed pawns, and white's king stops this pawn, so black's not even better here. It's just a draw. But white played f5 getting cute, and that could work out, but it's the same past three pawns, but black has a passed e-pawn now instead of black not having an e-pawn. So I have three passed pawns, and here I have three passed pawns, but, but black has a passed e-pawn. That's, that's extra bishop, too. So now black is completely winning. Always play bishop f1. Okay, bishop f1 is a blunder. I didn't even see bishop f1. I just assumed black was going to go here. Now I can go bishop f1 later because... Make two queens. So F E3 is winning. Bishop F1 is not winning. Now it's a draw again. Okay, he played G6, which is one of the drawing moves. King F6. Now white has two drawing moves. Played one of them. Bishop B5 is forced. King D4. This is just a draw now. So white has his three passed pawns again. Okay, now white made a very uh, poor decision... But, but, it, but it actually draws. But white should just play king f4 here. But he played king takes e4. That actually still draws. Check. And now this is why it was a poor decision. Because you would expect king f4 and king f3 are very similar. And if one move is better than the other, probably king f4. But the engine calculates to the end of the game... And it says king f4 loses and king f3 draws. The truth hurts. Okay. And the reason is when white plays king f3, 
He wants to play g3, getting rid of the last pawn. And after g3, h3, I can play g4. And I draw. Um, however, uh, I don't draw when I play king f4, because if I, I can't play g3 and g4 because you queen. So that's too bad. Okay, and now black's actually winning. Black only has one winning move, and somehow he found it. Although I guess it's by far the most obvious move. So I guess that's how he found it. He played king takes g6. And now white played king f3. If white's king was already on f3, he could play g3 and draw. All right, let's analyze that. King f3, king takes, g3, h3, g4, takes, king takes g4, and we both queen. And it's a draw. So king f3 would have drawn, and if white could move again after king f3, then g3 would draw, because like king f3. But now king g5, and we're too slow. And now black is winning. Bishop c6 is Zugzwang. This is a good example of Zugzwang. White can't move. It's white's turn to move. So black's bishop b5 to c6 was excellent. And the truth hurts. Okay, so if he moves his king, he loses his pawn with check. And the bishop goes back. So... Played for stalemate, and white played, black played here instead of playing stalemate. H3, and H2 check, I assume. Ah, he played king H1, good. Good to have the game ended, mate. So that game was pretty topsy-turvy. White got the better of the opening, then made a couple of poor choices, and then was struggling the rest of the game. Black's technique in the position where he pushed all of his pawns and got to this position, I mean, this is incredibly winning. And then to not play, you know, you have to play one or two accurate moves. Like if you play rook d1, the game just ends because you take the knight and queen. So Black played the poor move, then Black played another poor move, and then... Black got this position that's like barely winning and and then immediately played the move g5, which doesn't win. Then he was winning again, but it's very complicated. So I don't understand the move g5 because like 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 this position, why would black want this? Why did black give up a pawn and give white three passed pawns? Why did, why did Black think that would be a good idea? That's not a good idea. A G5 is a weird move because it just loses a pawn. And it gives White a lot of passed pawns. That's a very poor move from your opponent. Then the game got interesting. So that was good.